Welcome to Modern Entrepreneur, I'm Landon Ray. Today we have John Jantz, who is the marketing consultant, speaker, and best-selling author of Duct Tape Marketing. Duct Tape Selling, the commitment engine, the referral engine, and SEO for, for growth. He's the creator of the Duct Tape Marketing System and Duct Tape Marketing Consulting Network that trains and licenses small business marketing consultants around the world. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. I've been a fan. I read your book. Um, you, well, you're in my office. You uh -huh. found a first edition uh, on my uh, on my shelf. Yeah, and I signed it. You didn't even ask me to. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice of me to let you sign it. Uh, so thank you for being here. You bet. Um, this is great. So. So you've you know had a ton of success. It's been a long time now. How long has it been? You've been working. Twenty nine years. Twenty nine years. I started my marketing consulting practice. Yeah. That's unbelievable. So yeah. you're twelve. Well, and the, the reality is I couldn't find a job. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, same, so I made same myself here. unemployable. Yeah. <laughs> same here. So if you could go back twenty nine years and give that kid a piece of advice now, knowing what you know, what would it be? I would say just do exactly what I did. Yeah. You know, for twenty nine years. No, I, I really to tell you the truth. It, I'm so bad at that kind of hindsight because I think, um, you know, if I have a talent, if you will, or, or a trait that has served me, it's curiosity. Mm -hmm. And so there were a lot of things I did that made mistakes because I was really curious and went this direction, went that direction. But it also, it led me to blogging in 2003 and podcasting in 2005, Early. which, you know, ultimately took off and, and have been, you know, kind of the mainstays of my business. Uh -huh. um, and I don't think that I would have gotten there had I not wanted to try out a lot of things. Um, I, I will say that, you know, that's something that now I think is, is a real challenge for folks because because, hey, if all you're doing is trying out things, you know, you're, you can drive yourself crazy. Yeah, there's so um, many things. And so I think you have to have a point of view. And my point of view is always, could this new thing be valuable for my customers? Could uh -huh. it allow me to serve them better? And so that uh, really acted as a great filter, I think. How do you decide, given that there's like 10 million and one things that you could be doing now, yeah. how do you decide, um, you know, when it's time to... to to make an investment in, yeah. in some new channel yeah. or new project um, to to reach out to customers in a new way. Well, you know, early on, I think I just worked more, like a lot of people. You know, I worked worked a lot of hours, and so I yeah. <laughs> experimented with everything. Uh, to, today, where my business uh, sits, uh, we actually are. You know, we try to take a pretty hard line on identifying what our priorities are yeah. for the next quarter, at least, uh -huh. um, and sticking to those. And and there's, I guarantee you, there's never more than two or three. Yeah. Um, and my job really then is to. Stay Stay involved in the highest payoff work uh, possible, uh -huh. and so that's something that uh, that you know I help decide, but also that my staff really keeps me to task. And I'm sure you have a little bit of that as well, because mm -hmm. uh, like you, I like doing the stuff that our business does. Yeah. You know, but that um, that doesn't probably work. You know, to scale a business if I'm in there tweaking you know websites or doing you know SEO or yeah. metadata or something. Uh, but but I enjoy doing that. Yeah. You know, and so it's a real challenge. Uh, but it helps to really surround your yourself with people who get that their job is to keep you out of that stuff sometimes. Yeah. You mentioned curiosity as a, a, a trait that's worked for you. Um, do you have another um, sort of unique skill set that you think has made a difference? Uh, you know, I, I really never, like I went into this thing just loving to learn um, yeah. and I suppose that that's probably it. I mean, I read like a lot of entrepreneurs, I probably read some part of several hundred books a year yeah. um, e easily um, and I think that, that that's something that, um, that, that really helps kind of keep that, you know, constant learning going. You know, we're, we're, we're you know, the last decade, look at the change that's gone on. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, uh, in my presentation, you know, I talk about the fact that when I started my business, there was no digital marketing. It yeah. didn't even exist. And yeah. so, you know, if you're not willing to dive in and change with that and evolve and learn what the new things are going on, you know, eventually, and maybe faster now than ever, you're going to get swallowed up. So what is working for you now? You've still got a serious business that's yeah. growing all yeah. over the world. Yeah. What is what is um, kind of driving business for you? Well, a big part of, of my focus, and it's just because where I want to put my attention is, uh, you know, my, my goal always was to, to, to help small business owners. I love the salt of the earth, you know, brick and mortar business owners that, yeah. you know, we're getting the life sucked out of them. And I think that that a lot of that's because they couldn't figure out this marketing idea. And so helping install a marketing system and seeing the results and the impact that that has uh, has really driven me for a lot of years. And so now, uh, in effect, I'm trying to replicate myself. I, you know, currently have about 125 independent marketing consultants around the world that yeah. are installing the duct tape marketing system now in thousands of businesses. So, you know, that was the path that I chose to go 
in an, in an attempt to work with maybe ultimately over my career millions of small business owners. Yeah, how exciting. Yeah, it has that's, been. That's amazing. So, and then what are you learning? What is, you know, you, you say you read 100 books or 200 books or whatever, but, but in terms of like what you're actually like wrestling with in your yeah. business, what is the kind of cutting edge for you? You know, it's, it's, it's really strange. I'm not sure this is going to be a very satisfactory answer. It's not the AI and the stuff that people are talking about. Yeah. Um, I think there's a real passion and maybe it's just my bias, but a real passion for people to go back to understand what really makes their customers tick. What, you know, from a strategic level uh, is actually a, a way to serve them and to add value, you know, to their lives and to their businesses. And I think that that's uh, more about developing a point of view about caring than it is really about the platforms or the tools. And I, and I think that that if my real emphasis right now is to figure out how can I add value <laughs> to my customers' lives, you know, rather than how can I use some new tool to market to them. We've got several people in here that are, it, it seems like the gestalt of the moment almost. Yeah. And of course, add, adding value is, is, is a foundational piece of any business, but, but it does feel like, um, you know, the, several of the last few people I've interviewed are talking about, um, you know, almost, uh, unwinding a little bit from from the tools, yeah. from the technology, from the strategy of the moment, and really getting back to yeah. um, that foundation. That well, foundation and I think piece. I think there's a balance. Obviously, tools like um, Entreport, you know, allow yeah. people to do some amazing things that are actually beneficial to the customers, that remove friction, that serve them in a way they want to be served. Yeah. And so I think that what you have to do then is is take you know the best of that, and then be able to extract. You know, what are the ways now that we uh, can use technology for good, but then also uh, understand that fundamentally, you know, serving customers, adding value, making people's lives better is what we do. Yeah. Um, and, and we can't lose sight of that. And I think there was a little pendulum swing, you know, to look, all this technology will make it so we never have to talk, talk to, to anyone. anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I think we've swung back from some of that and people are saying, okay, this, this technology works for certain elements, mm -hmm. but at, at some point, you know, hugs will never go out of style. Yeah, hugs. <laughs> so, uh, so what is it that you're actually uh, like implementing that's the the is is the kind of the the manifestation of that? Yeah. Well, I, I in my own personal work, you know, we're doing more live events, yeah. um, and and I don't mean events like giant, you know, big events. I mean we are doing more. You know, 15 people in a room, you know, for a weekend, you know, yeah. to, to figure out, you know, how they can solve each other's problems um, in a meaningful way, yeah. you know, right then, not, you know, not just like here's a couple tips. Yeah. Um, so we're doing much more of that. Um, from a content standpoint, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is just get a lot deeper and deeper. You know, there was a period there where it was like content, you know, more is better. Um, and what we're really, I'm really actually encouraging our, our clients to, you know, to, to to, if all you can produce is one piece of content a month, produce one awesome piece of content a month yep. instead of phoning it in. Yep. Um, and you really use that content now to build much deeper relationships, not just as an SEO tool or not just as you know some something to put on your website, but actually use it as an asset for building deeper relationships. Yeah, we have the same sort of. Uh, Drive, I think, to connect with our customers in another way because we have, we have, uh, you know, this is a, a live event we do, mm -hmm. uh, Entrepalooza. But apart from that, we don't have a lot of. Well, we have, we have a few other things, but, but you know, it's it's software, right? Yeah. It's, it's pixels and and buttons and um, and even most of our support now is on chat. Yeah. Uh, you know, people don't pick up the phone anymore. So we've, um, you know, made the bizarre investment of trying to take our content and. and Put it into a magazine, yeah. uh, you know, specifically with the idea that just like bringing something back into the real world right. um, almost creates a relationship yeah. Yeah. that um, that we're kind of like beginning to lose. Well, and I and I think companies like yours um, are doing a really good job, though. Even with you know, part of that going to chat is you have to scale. It's really hard to scale. Yeah. You know, let's get ten people in a room. You know, every week, right? Yeah. So you have to scale that. But I think what you guys are doing a great job is is you're ex you're not just using that. Uh, connection to write FAQs. I mean, mm -hmm. you're actually bringing it back to the engineering team, who is then, um, you know, maybe doing a better job of making a better product yeah. because of the feedback that you're getting. And I think that's another way to have that human connection. It it may travel through, you know, video chat or yeah. Twitter or whatnot. But I think that that in, at the end is your customers seeing that they're being heard. They, they um, know and it, yeah. yeah. And I think that that's 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 a manifestation of it that a company at scale can do. Yeah.
So you've been at this a while. Um, you see an end game for yourself in, <laughs> in the duct tape system? Um, you know, I have set it up actually to, you know, we were very systems driven. Um, we are very process and methodology driven. Uh, the network itself, I think, uh, you, know, you know, one of the things that it was very dependent on me early on. Mm -hmm. uh, people joined because they wanted to be part of duct tape marketing. And as it's evolved, it's actually taken on a bit more of a life of its own. It's very, you know, certainly uh, tied to the duct tape brand. Uh, but uh, the members of the network themselves have really are, are really adding a tremendous amount of value now. Yeah. Uh, I think that that could actually end up uh, on, on its own. I, I don't really have a um, I don't really have a great you know here's you know who's going to take over my consulting practice right. uh, because we've you know we've really used that to uh, to do a lot well you know a number of revenue streams. Uh, I do think that. I do think the value of the brand, I mean, just uh, the, the traffic, and we were talking, I think, uh, a little bit uh, pre-interview about, you know, just the, the domain authority of, of, you know, of duct tape marketing. I mean, those are all assets that at some point um, maybe entrepreneurs should, entrepreneur should buy. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking, I was thinking the opposite, but, but okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so what would you like your legacy to be? You've been at this a long time. A lot of people know who yeah. John Jance is. What would you like to be remembered for? Well, you know, one of the things I'm really enjoying doing, and this, you know, this sounds really goofy, but when you're building your business, you know, it's a lot of go, go, go. You know, I'm doing a, I, I, and I never worked in Kansas City. I mean, or at least when I started my practice, I did. It was all local. And when the internet came along and we blew up and did all the different things, you know, I no longer did any work in Kansas City. And so um, I'm starting uh, to do a fair amount of, um, pro bono work for some organizations in Kansas City oh, trying cool. to help um, entrepreneurs that maybe have a little bit of a disadvantage getting something going and uh, and you know could use I, I wouldn't call it a full-on mentorship but, but some advice on you know how to get some things going yeah so awesome. that's that's a you know that's that's hopefully where you know we all get to a place where you can do some of that do some of that yeah so we've called this thing a modern entrepreneur and um, the the point of that is to try and you know, point at the fact that we're in this unique moment in yeah. in history where things have changed. They're changing so quickly. Um, the opportunities that are available to entrepreneurs are all new. Um, what do you feel like it means to be a modern entrepreneur? What are those opportunities? Yeah. What What are the responsibilities even uh, of, of being an entrepreneur today? Well, there, there's a, a body of literature that I'm really fond of, and it was written mostly in the 1820s to the 1850s. It was called Transcendentalist. Uh -huh. So, you know, Emerson is in there, Thoreau is in there. And, you know, really a big theme of that work was self-reliance, mm -hmm. uh, which was Emerson's kind of uh, probably his, 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 yeah, his big, you know, it was, a, it was actually an essay, a lecture, uh -huh. but, it, but it's the one he's probably the most known for. Yeah. Um, and I think, that, I think that we're in a period of um, the self-reliant entrepreneur right uh -huh. now, that, that uh, it's not just about chasing some idea of creating the next YouTube, uh, type you know type of thing or the next Uber or whatever you know whatever it is uh, that that there's a not only is there an ability to you know to get freedom and to get security I think there's almost a, a responsibility to yourself as an entrepreneur now to you know to trust what it is you're you're doing and to to stop listening both to the kind of stuff in your head and the doubts you know from other people that you know some sometimes I you know I I coach a lot of you know folks that are starting their business now or at least I I advise them and you know one of the things that you know they're always struggling with is they're listening to too many other people and not listening to themselves yeah um, and I think that that's you know that's that's kind of where we are so I, I tell everybody that listens go back and read Self Reliance. Read Self-Reliance. Awesome. John, it's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for doing this. Would you sign our wall? I certainly will. All right. It's behind you. <laughs> I was going to say.